A 4.3 gram coin is placed 19 centimeters from the center of a turntable. The coin has a static and kinetic coefficient of friction with the turntable surface. And a mu k of 0.72, no, mu s. It's going to be mu s. Mu k is 0.52. It makes sense that the static would be bigger than the kinetic. It usually is. What is the maximum angular velocity, so that's omega, with which the turntable can spin without the coin sliding? And it measured in radians per second, which makes sense because angular speed is measured in radians per second. So start by drawing a picture. In this case, we're going to do a circle. Our coin, I'm going to say it's at the edge, just to give myself more writing room. And this distance right here is going to be R, and it's spinning. So looking at the coin, I'm going to draw the coin over here as a square. I could do a circle. I probably should have done a circle. Hmm. Hindsight. So there's going to be a force friction pulling it in. That force friction is going to be uh, mu uh, static because it's not moving. Well, it is moving. It's not moving relative to the turntable. Times force normal. And the force normal in this case is going to be um, mass times gravity. All right. So now I'm going to rewrite this a little bit more plainly so we can solve it. Force friction is going to be coefficient of static friction times mass times gravity because that is what's holding it on. It's, what's, it's the force of friction that's opposing, that's allowing the um, uh, coin to not slide off the turntable with the spinning. So mu m, m gravity, true which is going to be mass times acceleration. I'll draw a little C there as a subscript, just to, as a reminder that that is um, centripetal acceleration. So we have mv squared over r. Conveniently, the mass is E relevant. So I'm going to rewrite this. Coefficient static friction mg equals mv squared over r. Looks like the mass is irrelevant. We'll see. So mass cancels, and we want to find the speed. Now this is linear speed, so we'll probably have to convert it later, but we totally can, not a big deal. V squared equals coefficient of static friction times radius times gravity. So the relationship when they're, when they're turning without slipping. So what is the maximum angular speed at which they spin without the coin sliding? So without sliding, without slipping, that means that the relationship x equals r theta, v equals r omega, a equals r alpha. This is the relationship between linear and angular uh, motion. So what we want is v equals r omega. So v squared is going to be uh, r omega squared. I know sometimes I use capital R, sometimes I use lowercase. I should be more consistent. I am not. It does keep life interesting though, I suppose. So omega squared equals static coefficient of friction times r times gravity all over r squared. The squared cancels with one of those. We find omega, the angular speed, is coefficient of static friction times gravity divided by radius. And I'll say, I'll leave this as omega squared just because I don't like drawing square. I don't like writing square root symbols. Uh, it's a personal animosity of mine. All right, so now get the calculator. Calculator on, what do we want? Um, coefficient of friction, gravity divided by radius. So let's see here. Second square root of quantity, coefficient of friction, we'll use static, so it'll be 0.72, that's pretty good, times gravity, which is 9.81, divided by the radius, which I think they gave it to us in centimeters, I'm going to convert it to meters, and then we square root the whole thing, and I get an answer of 6.097, which I'm going to call 6.1. So. 6.1, and this is 
radians per second. So the answer for this one, at least what I would try, 6.1. Maybe they want two, maybe 6.10. Yeah, 6.10 would be good as well. So that's how I'd approach this one. You basically balance. It's the force of friction, which is causing the acceleration to allow the coin to move in circular motion. You use static coefficient because the coin is not moving relative to the turntable. And the coefficient of friction, uh, the kinetic coefficient of friction and the mass of the coin, irrelevant, doesn't matter. Hope that helped. See you next time.